Season 2024 has just kicked off and we are already at a point where there are trade rumors swirling. In today's video, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cover off some of the trade rumors, some updates we've heard players either signing contracts or delaying contracts, and just give a little bit of a snapshot as to what the player movement landscape is looking like in March of 2024. Now I know it's early, but I know you guys froth the trade rumor and to be honest, so do I. And there are a few updates to consider as well. And so what I'm thinking is maybe doing this about once a month, giving you guys an update of, of what the trade landscape is and covering off a few rumors that are going around. If you could do me a favor, I've noticed that about 44% of the people who have watched videos over the last month haven't actually subscribed to the channel. So if you are enjoying the content or you wanna see more AFL content, footy tipping show, weekly review show, live streams, general video essays, and the occasional trade rumor update, this is a great channel to subscribe to. Great, so now we got that out of the way, we can talk a little bit about what the landscape's looking at. So there's a little bit of our context to be aware of. So there's been a new CBA, a new collective bargaining agreement that will come into action this year. And specifically what we're talking about is that the average player salary will go from $387,000, I think that's the mean average right now, in three years, so by the end of 2027, that average will go from 387 to $519,000. So everyone's getting paid a lot more. So what that means is from this point, as the salary cap increases, players can expect big pay rises when they're out of contract over these next three years, which to my understanding is, is partly the reason why Ben Mackay got such a massive contract and triggered band one compensation last year. It's because his contract is aligned with the new CBA, the new salary cap, and it still triggered the old bands that were in effect. So I don't know why that's the case, but that is apparently the case. And like pretty much every year, there's a bunch of quality players out of contract this year with speculation already swirling, but we'll cover off a few teams that are expected to have big salary budgets this off season. So North Melbourne and West Coast, as you'd expect, the weakest teams would generally have more cash to splash. Both teams having veterans either just leave or about to leave as well. It's certainly worth considering. But other teams that have been mentioned are Adelaide, Hawthorne, Fremantle, and Essendon, as well as St Kilda. All of these teams have money to spend apparently, and by extension, could be on the market for some of these players out of contract. There's also another little tidbit here. Melbourne, dealing with Angus Brayshaw's contract. Now, Angus Brayshaw obviously retired due to concussion injury, and it is pretty much a foregone conclusion. Angus Brayshaw is going to get that money, but I believe there's some sort of negotiation going on between Melbourne and the AFL where maybe Melbourne's salary cap gets subsidized, so they still pay Angus Brayshaw, but they can use his contract as space to potentially sign somewhere else. I think that could be the new standard for when players have to retire due to concussion. There's no confirmation on that, but I believe negotiations are progressing. So that means that Melbourne could also have a little bit of cash to splash this off season. So before we get into speculating about the players who might move clubs, uh, it's worth noting that a few players have signed contracts that I've previously talked about. So Ben King was a big contract story. He's apparently signed a two year extension that's coming from the Gold Coast Suns website. So that takes him to free agency, I believe. So it's nice to get that concern off their backs, I suppose, for the Gold Coast Suns. Todd Marshall also signed a new five year deal to stay at Port Adelaide. I did think that a few clubs might come hard for him. Aaron Cadman also re-signed with the Giants. Uh, but again, I don't think he was a realistic chance to leave. So one of the players that is out of contract this year and will likely get a bit of attention is Will Hayward. And it's been reported by John Ralph that Will Hayward is getting a lot of attention, particularly from the South Australian clubs. He is originally South Australian. He's currently 25 and I believe at the end of this season, he qualifies as a restricted free agent. So clubs can make an offer and Sydney have the option to match. And if they do match, it goes to a trade, but technically it's still a free agent. Ralph says that despite the fact that there is genuine interest from the South Australian clubs, there will be interest from other clubs and it's most likely going to come from that group of teams that I mentioned at the start of this video. Will Hayward's an interesting one. You know, statistically, his stats don't really compare well to other players that play that sort of half forward role, but described as a very selfless player, but he just gets the 12 touches, a goal a game, three tackles. In the end, it doesn't really matter what we make of his potential trade value if he is a free agent. It just means that the contract, the size of the contract that gets offered from another club in this deal will dictate what kind of compensation pick is generated. I kind of found the the South Australian interest, other than the fact that he is a local, kind of interesting, you know, as that sort of half forward, strong marking, somewhat defensively minded player. I don't know which of Adelaide and Port Adelaide really need him more. Adelaide in particular, I feel like do have a lot of good young medium forward types. I really don't think that's a weakness for them. Maybe it makes more sense at Port Adelaide, but either way, both sides are going to be finalists this year, in my opinion, and certainly in that window of trying to improve their team with established players. So 
Watch this space. Hey guys, I just want to let you know that this trade rumor update is brought to you in a paid partnership with BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a platform that matches you with a credentialed therapist who is trained to listen and give helpful, unbiased advice. And I do understand that starting therapy can be tricky for some people. Some people find the face-to-face -face interaction side of things a little bit uncomfortable, or sometimes it's about finding the right therapist for you. Do they even live in your area? The great thing about the BetterHelp platform is that I think it overcomes some of these issues. So for instance, have your therapy sessions as a phone call or a video chat or even messaging if that's what you prefer. To start this process, all you have to do is click the link in the description or in the pinned comment of this video. It'll take you to a questionnaire. That questionnaire helps them assess your specific needs. And in most cases, you'll be matched with a therapist within 48 hours. Then if you are in a situation where you're matched with a therapist that you don't think is quite the right fit for you, you can switch to a different one at no additional cost. You know, for a lot of us, we find it easier to look after our physical health by going to the gym and eating right, but we don't necessarily apply the same dedication to our mental health. So if you are someone that you think that could benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. Like I said, you can click the link in the description or you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. Going to that link does help support the channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. So you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Thanks guys, let's get back to the video. Let's talk about Jamara Yugel Hagen. This one is not going to go away until he is signed on the dotted line for the Western Bulldogs or any other club. But because he's such a high value player that could potentially be a superstar, the speculation is going to continue. But Mitch Cleary has reported that Hawthorne has reportedly entered the race. Now I thought it was already kind of known that Hawthorne were quite interested, but either way, it's now been reported by Mitch Cleary. And again, it's a little bit curious, you know, Hawthorne reportedly also gone after players like Todd Marshall, who's just signed again with Port Adelaide, Ben King, and also missed out on him. Aaron Norton apparently they had a big crack at last year as well. And it's interesting their aggression to get a key forward when some would say that their back line might be a bit more of a pressing need. But what I think is happening here is that Hawthorne, particularly Sam Mitchell, who played alongside Jared Ruffhead and Lance Franklin, sees a key forward pairing of potentially Jamara Yugo Hagen and Mitch Lewis as the key to their next premiership window. And Jamara seems like a safe bet to be a very good player at the least. 35 goals from 23 games last year. But I will say that it seems like he's given every indication that he's really happy at the Bulldogs and is not going to leave. That being said, crazy things have happened. I go back to that famous Hugh Greenwood tweet who put up some obnoxious tweet about him not leaving the Gold Coast Suns only for him 48 hours to leave the Gold Coast Suns. So you never really know with these things and, and things can change in trade week. So until he signed with the Bulldogs, that story is going to continue to swirl. Another player is Cam Zohar. Now this one is interesting and I think he's seen as gettable. He signed a two-year extension at the end of 2022, which deliberately takes him to that free agency period. Now, Signing a contract to get to free agency does not mean that they're likely to leave because the contract that they receive when they're a free agent, either by their home club or another club, is likely to be the biggest of their career. But Zoha has been linked to other clubs previously. I think Essendon had some interest in him back in 2022 before he signed that two-year deal. And the latest update that's reported by Code, Code Sports, is that he has delayed contract. Now that could just be because he's trying to maximize his value before signing a new deal with North. Because as it currently stands, Zoha is a little bit removed from his absolute best form. He wasn't bad last year. He kicked 20 goals from 16 games. The year before, he kicked 34 from 19. But perhaps he's willing to back himself in for a start and North Melbourne to improve. And if he's got a 40 goal season in him, then that means his contract, wherever that is, is going to be higher. But it doesn't mean that he's not a chance to leave. I think, you know, you'd have to consider Essendon a realistic contender for him. Sydney is also potentially going to have interest in him, particularly if they lose someone like a, a Will Hayward. And I do think Richmond as well is a really good fit for someone like Cam Zerha, at least from Richmond's perspective, not necessarily for Cam Zerha. And and of course, both WA clubs you'd think would be interested in him as a local player. Again, this one would be kind of funny and ironic if he did leave because of the whole criticism of Jason Horn Francis when he left. But you know, these things do happen. I think Tom Lynch was a bit guilty of that too when he left Gold Coast. Another interesting one here is Logan McDonald from the Sydney Swans. Now, I never really thought it'd be super realistic that Logan McDonald would leave the Swans this year, but you know, I will temper this by saying a lot of this talk is coming from Big Footy, but there is this belief out there and take it with an absolute tea bag <laughs> teaspoon of salt. Big footy rumors are just that. They're rumors. That being said, there seems to be a belief out there that Fremantle have pretty much got him signed. So I'm just passing that on to you. I'm not saying believe it. But there was talk last year that Fremantle did have, you know, this, this in mind when they traded for future first round picks. So they now hold three first round picks in Collingwood, Port Adelaide's and their own in 2024. So, you know, if Fremantle do miss out on McDonald, I do imagine that they're going to be throwing these draft picks around, trying to get established players. I think that's where they're at personally. But I do think Logan McDonald to Fremantle makes so much sense and it would give me so much more confidence in Fremantle becoming a good team in a few years if they did get him. But it's a big year for Sydney generally. We've already talked about Will Hayward. Logan McDonald's out of contract. Ollie Florent will also become a free agent. Errol Goulden and James Robot are also out of contract. 
contract, although the latter two, I'm not too sure if there's any chance they leave. Then there's a Tim English talk. I don't know if there's too much more to report on this. He is going to be out of contract and possibly going to get the biggest contract, whether he stays or where he goes, of any free agent this year. So he's still, you know, out of contract at the end of 2024. And the language from him is just simply that he doesn't really deal with his contracts, his manager does, and he's just going to focus on playing good football, which kind of implies that it's not going to happen anytime soon. There has been serious links to West Coast, at least extreme interest from West Coast, although I believe that Ryan Daniels did suggest that Tim English is still a chance to leave, but it might not be to West Coast. So that one's still well and truly up in the air. But again, like Sydney that I just mentioned, the Bulldogs have a number of contract headaches to deal with this particular offseason. And I think I'm going to do a video soon talking about every team's contract headaches. But we talked about Jamara. We talked about Tim English already. And then there's, of course, the biggest elephant in the room in Bailey Smith. Now, of course, there's no update on Bailey Smith yet. And with his ACL, he's not going to be playing football. The longer he goes unsigned, the more likely it seems he's going to leave because he's not playing on the field to try and increase his value. So wait and see on that one. My gut feel is he leaves, but that is purely my opinion. And then Liam Baker is another interesting one that it could potentially leave Richmond. So he's played seven years there and he'll become out of contract at the end of 2024. And uh, it's quite unusual to see a player out of contract at seven years because that's actually the year before you become a free agent. Most players seem to deliberately sign contracts right up until that free agency period to maximize their next contract. It's not super indicative or anything like that. I just found it kind of interesting. But here's another player that has delayed contract talks. This is quoting him directly. He says, my deal with my manager is that when we get stuck into the air, I hold up my end trying to play some good footy and then he'll hold up his end trying to work with the club later on in the year. So again, it could mean nothing, but it could also mean something. Who knows? Now, John Ralph from the Herald Sun reported that the midfielder is keen to put contract talks on hold at the present to gauge where the Tigers stand under Adam Uze's new management. So this implies that Liam Baker is waiting to see if Richmond, you know, are any good and whether or not they're going into a rebuild. Is this team still in finals contention? And that would be quite reasonable, although I have no idea if John Ralph is right. Either way, Liam Baker's got a big decision on his hands. It sounds like West Coast is probably the more likely out of the two WA teams to be interested in him. But again, there's going to be a number of teams probably trying to sign him. And I got to say, this is also big for Richmond. I think with where their list is at, I don't think they're in a position where they can afford to lose maybe a top 10 player in their club on current form when their depth is what it is. So those are the updates that we have on various players' contracts. There's a few players that I have talked about in 2024 trade rumors videos previously that didn't get an update. Specifically, I've, I've talked about Elliot Himmelberg potentially leaving Adelaide to GWS, but there's no update on that. Hugh McCluggage, you know, we're one game into the season, nothing on that. Ben Ainsworth is another free agent and Ollie Florent too. So those are the players we haven't heard anything about. And of course, Bailey Smith as well. That one's probably just going to simmer away in the background for a few months. But anyway, guys, that is my best attempt at trying to condense all of the trade rumors out there. But let me know in the comments is there anything I've missed? I know you guys like your trade content, so uh, by all means, fire away some more. And like I said, I'll, I'll do some more content on this in the future, maybe monthly to start the season and then pick it up a little bit closer to the trade period. But like I said, keep an eye on the channel for a video, maybe in the next week or so, every club's biggest contract headache. But I appreciate you watching, guys. I appreciate you being subscribed to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.